I'm Dr. Oliver Baumann from the School of Psychology at Bond University, and I'm using neuroimaging to investigate the brain processes underlying memory. So, our recently published study, which actually took over two years um, to complete, because this was a two part study, essentially, first establishing our experimental paradigm outside the MRI scanner, and once we develop a version that we were happy with, porting it to the MRI scanner where then the participants were doing the memory task in the study. So yeah, the basic task in the fMRI scanner for the memorization was that we were showing people objects in front of backgrounds. So we had lots of, lots of different um, objects like cups and clocks and watches and different backgrounds like a mountain scene or forest. And um, they were asked to encode those objects in front of the backgrounds. Um, but importantly, one day earlier um, in the fMRI study, um, we showed them some half of the objects just in isolation. So that was the familiarity manipulation. So that when they're in the scanner, half of the objects are familiar, half are not. And then to essentially um, observe that the fact that if an object is unfamiliar, that this unitization with the background happens. But if you have seen that object before in a different context, then that fusion with the background um, doesn't happen. If you encounter a person only in one specific environment, like your GP, you might have seen them 20 times, but it's always the same practice. Then you're still gonna have a problem recognizing your GP in a different environment like the shopping center. So it doesn't even help to encounter the same person several times. As long as it's always the same environment, it still creates this unit of the person with the background. And it sounds a little bit funny because obviously on a conscious level, we know that the GP is not bound to their practice, but from our memory systems point of view, it's just the most efficient way to account everything. The doctor, the practice, and all its equipment, like it's one thing or one unit that is not separatable. And then only if really necessary, objects or persons being encoded um, as separate entities. The reason why often our brain would try to encode something as a unit is just because it's more efficient. So essentially it needs less brain cells, you could say, or less energy to encode a unit than to cater for individual entities. And, um, and that's a general principle that we often observe in how the brain works, that the brain tries to do things with the least amount of effort and energy possible. So if you seem to have forgotten a person in a new context, it's not really a deficit of the memory system. It doesn't highlight an impairment, but it really just highlights the normal functioning of the memory system. And therefore, these kind of studies are important to distinguish um, healthy forgetting from abnormal forgetting. And on the surface, they might just look to be the same thing. And only by a systematic study, we can distinguish healthy from abnormal forgetting. So there are many psychiatric and neurological disorders that lead to forgetting, like Alzheimer, for instance, but not all forgetting is abnormal. And our study essentially looked at normal forgetting and trying to understand when forgetting is healthy and when it is not. So only if we really have a detailed understanding of healthy forgetting, we can better diagnose also um, abnormal forgetting.